So this video has got quite a few layers to it. So if you're familiar with the film Inception, well, uh, good luck everybody. Okay, so I talk a lot about score in my videos. And that's because, well, score is the only key metric that we can use to see how well you've done. I mean, you walk into a clubhouse, no one's asking you how far you hit the ball on whatever hole or what's your strokes gained um, statistics from today's round or all the stories that we make up about why we shot the scores we do. The only thing they're really interested in is your score, usually in relation to your handicap, to see what your net score was from today, because that is going to be the thing that is going to determine how well you did against them in the competition that you're playing in. However, focusing on your score is an outcome goal. And outcome goals are not very good because they create performance anxiety because they remove us from the present and they take us into the future or make us dwell on the past. This is why when you're on a good round and you realize you're on a good round, the wheels fall off or you're having a really bad round and you give up and you kind of say, well, it's not working out today. So you just throw mentally throw the towel in and then all of a sudden you start puring everything. So what we want to be doing is creating process goals. Now, process goals help us maintain and stay in the present moment. That way, each shot becomes its own unique challenge in that exact moment in time. Because no man ever steps in the same river twice, for it is not the same river, and he is not the same man. So how do we go about doing this? So instead of referring to our shots as numbers, we can just reference them as something else. So I believe there are three different types of shots. Now, golf is all relative because what I deem to be a good shot is going to be different from someone who is higher skilled than me. And just likewise, that someone else who is lower skilled is going to deem a good shot to be completely different. So I have kind of identified them, and I think we can all identify with these concepts, as the first one being satisfying. Now, this is the kind of shot that you hit, that you hit absolutely flush. You pure it, you rip it, you absolutely nut it. I mean, this is your Sunday best. Like I said, it's all relative to you and the golfer. But effectively, these are the kind of shots that really are the ones that keep you coming back. Um, these are the ones that really are the ego boosters. However, I've referred to them as satisfying because that's pretty much what they are. Yes, they might go a few yards further. Yes, they might have a better spin rate. Yes, they might have a slightly better flight. But ultimately, they are just or well, they just feel better. They are more satisfying than they are necessarily good, as you'll see in a minute. So the next category is acceptable. Now, these are the shots that still tend to go roughly where we want them to go, usually within a kind of a 10% window of kind of your dispersion, your overall distance um, and your direction. However, um, they don't really hurt us. They still end up in a pretty good spot. Um, they're just not necessarily exactly what we were looking for. And this, realistically, is what a good shot should be. It doesn't have to be that absolute flush pure shot that we were talking about earlier, which is just ultimately just a little bit more satisfying. Acceptable is good enough. And then we have poor. Now, these are the shots where you question whether you were even holding the right end of the club in the first place. These are the ones that go nowhere or they end up in a hazard or OB. And essentially, they will cost us a stroke or potentially put us in such a position that we can't really play a proper shot out of it. These are the ones that realistically are the ones that hurt our scorecards. Now we've identified each shot um, by, a, by a reference. All we do is now give that reference a mark. So satisfying could be a zero, acceptable could be a dash, and poor could be an X. And then as we play a shot, we just give the appropriate mark to that shot in a spare box on the uh, scorecard, and then we tally it up at the end. 
you could even have a bit of fun with it and uh, just creating your notes on your phone. You could just use emojis as you go along instead. Um, now, obviously, this works across every shot, including putting. So you can just tally up your final score um, on each hole as you go or even not until the end. So you have no idea really what you shot. So I gave this to Tom um, and asked Tom to have a go and see how he thought. And he's a, these are his thoughts on what he found from the process. Uh, I was a bit shocked, really, because um, usually when I'm playing, I'm always keeping track of the score. My mind is always numbers, numbers, numbers. So, And sometimes I can get ahead of myself and think I'm on for a good one and wreck myself. But I didn't think about what I was on, actually. I was just thinking shot to shot. Um, and I've just added up my strokes now and I was five over for... Um, for the back nine, um, biggest. I only had one double bogey. Uh, the rest were, I had, and I had a birdie in there as well. But at no point was I sort of thinking, "Oh, this is this is." Well, I'm on for a good round. I was just playing shot by shot by shot. Um, I found it really easy to reflect on my poor shots as well. Um, why they happened? Uh, um, I've got a miss that is like a push, where I leave the face open, and it's just like this horrid horrid wet fart out to the right. Um, and so, yeah, so it, it just keeps you engaged without getting down swing thoughts. It's just, you know, ev so um, <clears throat> I'm babbling a bit, but that's something that I will do every round now um, without fail. That, 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 that's probably for, for, for staying engaged, for knowing where my game is, uh, on any given round and just you know just focusing on the golf rather than the score like i say i'm absolutely over the moon with the way that's gone there to be you know playing off 22 and going round at nine in in five over is sort of completely uncharted completely uncharted territory um so yeah happy days <laughs> so you're now going to start to see trends in your game like which shots you struggle with or even which holes this now creates the basis for your practice. So instead of going to the range and needlessly working on trying to create a perfect swing, you're now gonna go with the purpose of exploring and experimenting with specific shots in order to gain the necessary experience required to be able to use them with more confidence. So say like you're struggling with 50 yard wedge shots. Okay, well, let's go and practice that. Or I never like, or I never hit a good shot on, on 17. Well, this is more likely that you either do not like the look of the shot or you can't even see what a good shot looks like on that hole so you could go to the range and set out markers and choose markers to kind of visualize the hole and see what shots and clubs that you could play that could move the ball into that area i mean this is a video all in itself so now another key advantage of doing this is that it's a great indicator for momentum during your round now, momentum is so important during golf. But I like to think of it almost like you're on a bike ride. And in order to ride efficiently, it is all about matching the right gear and effort to the gradient and terrain. Because there is little to no point in trying to go any faster if you're going uphill. And equally, if you're going downhill, you need to make sure that you don't pedal too fast, otherwise you could lose control. And always remember that if you're going uphill, what goes up must come down and vice versa. So in golf terms, what I'm trying to say is that if you're struggling during your round because you're effectively you're going uphill, there's no point pushing. There's no point trying too hard because ultimately you're just going uphill. And equally, when you're going downhill, don't overdo it. Don't When you're really on it and it's really going well, just try and not over overdo it. Don't push so hard that you lose control. Because like I said, it's all about maintaining momentum during your round. It's a bit like saying that when you're going downhill, that's when you're on your A game. And when you're riding on the flat, well, that's your B game. And when you're going uphill, well, that's when you have no game. But being able to understand where you're at during a round of golf or even during a hole allows you to make better decisions on making sure that you're playing golf in the present. And you're not just trying to get yourself ahead of yourself and thinking about score in the future or potentially even what you've done in the past. So momentum is absolutely critical during a round of golf. And it's something that I don't see many average golfers uh, really understanding or really they have one game plan. Go for it. 
and they go that they go hell bent on uh, everyone. I almost refer to it as full throttle golf. It is literally I'm going to put my foot down. I'm going to go as fast as I possibly can, and I might win, but I also might crash in a blazing inferno. Um, but if I do, it's going to be spectacular. That's kind of what the average golfer is really doing. They're not really understanding or seeing this, the way that the game ebbs and flows and being understanding and where you are in that point in the round gives you the ability to know, like I said, when to push, when to, 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 to maintain or when to really rein it back in. So spoiler alert, but one of the trends that you're going to realize is that you don't actually hit that many of the S shots during your best rounds. I mean, even the world's best say they only hit three or four a round. So basing our enjoyment of the game on this shows that we usually come away feeling very unsatisfied with our golf. And it's no wonder that our partners don't like us playing golf, considering we go out for hours and we come back more pissed off than we went out before. So this really highlights that we don't really have to hit every shot as flush and pure and solid or ripped um, for it to qualify as a good golf shot. And also as well, during the momentum phase as well, you will find that you will be playing most of your golf in that B game level. You will not sort of dip into that a game very often that kind of purple patch where everything comes together so really it's this middle ground of golf where we're hitting acceptable shots and we're playing in our b game this is where our golf usually is played and this is where we need to make sure that when we're in this zone that we're maximizing what we're doing and we're not pushing too hard um and risking you know big numbers coming out of it or vice versa that we're not we realize that you know what this is going okay um and we're not necessarily reining it too far back in again because you can also play too conservative um as well now golfers are perfectionists but perfectionism is killing your progress this is because perfectionism might seem like a good trait this is because it's often confused with high achievement but there are some key differences and the main one being is that a high achiever can be satisfied with doing a great job or achieving excellence or something close, even if their very highest goals weren't completely met. Now, perfectionists will only accept nothing short of perfection. Almost perfect is seen as failure. So feel free to please do your I mean, I'm going to urge you to do your own research on the problems that do come, do come from perfectionism, because trust me, when you sort of like, to, you know, pull back the covers and this and go down this rabbit hole, you will realize that this this satisfying perfectionist um, attitude that we have is really is killing your game. Good is good enough. So golf is not actually played in perfect conditions. And we are not perfect organisms. I mean, many of us, most of us are not mentally equipped to deal with the emotional turmoil a round of golf will throw at us. So instead of looking for more S shots during your round, maybe we should be looking at removing as many of the P shots as possible. Now, everyone is looking for more consistency from their games. Yet most are not employing a consistent approach. But does consistency even exist in golf? I mean, golf is not played in a consistent environment and we are not robots. However, I mean, that's, an, again, another video. Um, so if you're consistently changing clubs or reinventing your swing every range session, then it's no surprise that you're struggling with consistency. Because you can't get fit overnight, can you? It happens over a period of time by consistently increasing the intensity of the exercise. I mean, and what even is fit? Because you can get fitter than you are today and still continue on and get even fitter because there's no definitive point to fitness, just like there is no real definitive point to your development of skill and proficiency of golf. Because as you improve, you're not going to hit more S shots because it's all relative, like I said. What is an S now will be an A in the future as you allow your skill to develop over time. So, welcome to the process.